Reflexology for me, it wasn't a direct thing that I got into actually. I come from the arts, my background is in the arts, but it was one of those serendipitous things which I love in life. I love getting messages from the universe and knowing when something feels right. I had been in the arts previously so I was used to using my hands and over that time of being a caregiver realized that I really want to help people heal. I love the hieroglyphics because I've always loved Egypt. I've always had an affinity for Egypt. And there is a quote that I don't have it exactly, but it's something around, if I let you touch my feet, just don't harm me. So it's like work in a way that you're going to heal me and bring that whole body wellness. Usually where people have those callus is where they have a lot of tension. And then sometimes there will be some callus that seems a little bit out of place. But again, for me, that's an indication that there's some imbalance that, in that area and we need to work on that area more. The deeper I go with reflexology, the more of an understanding I just have of the body within the universe and how there's that deeper connection. And I'm sure you feel the same thing when you're doing acupuncture yeah. and TCM. TCM rock stars. Remember at the beginning when I first started podcasting, I said I would bring on the shakers, the movers, and all the people that make a difference in our lives as practitioners so we in turn can make a difference for our patients. Well, today I've got a friend of mine, Suzanne Chilton, who is the foot guru reflexologist. Today we talked about the history of reflexology. Walk like an Egyptian. You'll see what that is a sentence I'm putting in there in the introduction. It's a lot of fun talked about the reflexes, the foot basically reflecting the whole body. How do we utilize reflexology in our practice as an extra tool for us to support our patient in a way that's non-invasive and very calming to patients because it puts them in a parasympathetic state. I love microsystems. I love ear acupuncture, belly acupuncture, Dr. Tan balance method, and reflexology is another one that I truly, truly enjoy in my practice. And I learned it all from Suzanne, because as you know, we don't learn reflexology in RTCM schooling. So I brought her on so she can explain to you all this. And I want you to stay till the end because she has a little gift for all my TCM rockstar community today, because it's my birthday week. And so she's offering you guys something that you are going to love. I'm not going to let you wait any further. Let's start the show. Let's go. I'm so happy that my friend Suzanne Chilton is here today because this is going to be such a different episode. I've always said I'm going to bring practitioners and people that complement what we do as acupuncture practitioners, and you are the perfect one to have here. On top of it, you are here for my birthday week. So yay, yay. we are together on my <laughs> birthday. So welcome, welcome. Welcome, Suzanne. Thank you, Clara. Thank you so much for having me. You know, I always love chatting with you. So this is going to be awesome. So Suzanne and I know each other. We actually met on Instagram because her Instagram totally rocks and she's such a good teacher and she teaches so well on Instagram. And so we kind of started DMing and asking each other's question and connecting that way. And then we realized we were both in the Vancouver area, just in the suburbs of Vancouver. And it was just so funny. We're like, hey, you want to meet? So we ended up meeting and really getting along and really like each other's personality. And so we developed a friendship. And the reason I brought her in today, because what does she do? Well, Suzanne, for the last seven years, has been a registered Canadian reflexology therapist. I love that because reflexology, as we know, totally complements what we do as acupuncture practitioners. She's been doing this for seven years. She also is the founder of the Foot Guru Reflexology. I love the word guru because it means teacher. Yes. And Suzanne is such a great teacher. We can know something, but we're not always good at passing it on. And you're so good at passing it on. That's why I think I really enjoyed your videos. And that's how I connected with you on Instagram. So you obviously treat patients and you're going to people's house. You do in-home treatment, but you also teach practitioners how to do what you do. And so I'm excited about this as well. So before we start, I would love for you 
to tell us how did you get into reflexology, specifically foot reflexology? Why did you decide to do this? Thank you so much again for having me. Like, I, I love chatting with you. Reflexology for me, it wasn't a direct thing that I got into, actually. I come from the arts. My background is in the arts. But it was one of those serendipitous things, which I love in life. I love getting messages from the universe and knowing when something feels right. And actually, I went through a hard time with my husband early on in our relationship when we met. He developed cancer and he was only 31 years old. As I was helping him and being his caregiver, helping him through everything, I realized that he needed an alternative therapy to help him with all the side effects. He was going through chemo, he was going through radiation, and we did all the regular doctor's stuff, but I knew that there must be something else out there that could help him alleviate the pain, alleviate stress, basically help him on that next level. And I had been in the arts previously, so I was used to using my hands. And over that time of being a caregiver, realized that I really want to help people heal. So that sort of started me off on the path of thinking about what do I want to do where I'm using my hands, but I help people. So I, I was thinking about body work, right? I was thinking about maybe massage. And it was actually a massage therapist of mine that mentioned reflexology. And once I dove into it and started looking at the feet and how it's based in TCM, and there's so many layers to it, there's energetic, there's the physical, there's the anatomy, and that by learning this, you can go deeper into helping the body heal. I was just fascinated by it. And I love that you could continue learning more. And I realized it was such a gentle thing that I could start using that with my husband to help him get back on the road to recovery. Once I dove in and realized how interesting it was, how the whole body is connected in that microsystem in the feet, we have that in our hands as well. We have it in our face and our ears, as you know, with acupuncture. But once I dove into that and realized how amazing it could be to affect the whole body through the feet, I was just hooked. And since then, I've touched a lot of feet and it doesn't bother me. So yeah, it's been really great. I love it. And since then, I touched a lot of feet. Yes. I love it. <laughs> What's yeah. interesting about what you share is that, you know, it was a difficult time. Often in life, when there is difficult time and we are in the middle of the struggle, it's very hard to see what will come out of it that could be positive, right? Yeah. And this yeah. is one of the positive because, you know, I'll share with everybody, your husband is alive and he's, he's around. Here. And yeah. Yeah. So it's really, really positive, obviously, in that perspective. And then they got you to do something that not only you really enjoy doing, but you're really good at teaching. I wanted to share something with you before I ask you questions. Mm -hmm. Years ago, before we met, before I even went into TCM, I was in the fitness industry and in the fitness club, there was a lady that had posted a, oh, I do reflexology. And I thought, oh, I never done this before. I should try it. So I make an appointment and it's for next week. The next week happened and I was teaching for those of you who are not in Vancouver area, we are on the water. And so when you are in downtown Vancouver and you're trying to go to the North Shore, you have to go through either one or two bridges. And those bridges are always packed with a lot of traffic. And of course, I had my appointment on the other side of the bridge. And I got stuck on the bridge, as we all do in Vancouver often. <laughs> And I hate to be late. Now, prior to this, I was teaching an aerobics class. So I had drank like a liter and a half to two liters of water right after. I had taken a shower, jumped in my car, and then trying to get to my appointment on time. I had given myself a lot of time. Unfortunately, I do not like to be late for anybody. And so I parked my car with one minute to spare. I rush into it. And there was a lady there that was the assistant. And I said, hello. And she goes, oh, you need to fill up all this form. And I'm like, oh, oh no. So I'm trying to fill up all the form <laughs> as fast as I can because I feel so bad. And plus, you know, it's my hour with this lady. I don't want her to be late for somebody else. I need to pee so bad, so bad. But I don't want to make her wait another, you know, 30 seconds to a minute to two minutes, how long it takes oh me to my go pee God. because I feel so full. So I get in and she's really nice. And she's like, come on in. We sit down. We start talking. She asks me questions. Then I lay down. My feet are ready to go. And she literally looks at me, looks at my feet. And she goes, <laughs> so your bladder is a little full. You need to go pee. And I was like, no way. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, she was doing a little bit of foot reading there. <laughs> she sure was. And I was like, yeah. And she goes, go for it. So I went, emptied my bladder, came back. I love when people surprise you when you yeah. do something for the first time in a good way, obviously. And so that was such a great surprise because it instantly gave me trust in her ability to know what she was doing. It's one of the things that reflexology, you'll notice as you get it done, a lot of people, their stomachs are gurgling. It gets the digestion moving. And people usually have to use the bathroom after they need to go pee. So it, I'm glad that you went beforehand. Otherwise you would have been like really struggling in the chair there the entire time. <laughs> I'm so glad she made me go too. So can you go through with us on what, for the people that have never had it, yeah. what does a reflexology session looks like? Yeah. So what's really nice about reflexology is it's super non-invasive. So you're really just taking off your socks. I like to pull the pants up to the knees just because I like to work on the legs as well. And there's some reflexes on there as well. But I have a zero gravity chair. So people sit in this really amazing chair. Everybody loves. You get tilted back. I make you cozy with a blanket. I basically just wipe the feet down. I'm just using the pressure points and the reflexes on your feet with my fingers. So in that way, it's very non-invasive. I also have a very gentle style. There's different styles of reflexology, but mine's all about getting the client into and the patient into a very calm, relaxed, parasympathetic state so that their body can do the natural healing, right? I work very gently. It's not usually painful. And people often fall asleep during it. I go through and I work through about an hour session. I work all the different parts of the body via the feet. I work a little bit up the legs as well. And then after that, I can go back in and target different points if a client said that they're dealing with a digestive issue or they've got a lot of congestion in their lungs, they've had a cough or asthma. I can go back and work on those different reflexes and just pinpoint those. And then after that, I just let the client relax for about five minutes again, because your body's in that nice natural healing state, or just letting the cascade of everything happen. We're balancing hormones as we're working on the feet. We're helping move the digestive system um, and the urinary system too. It's really good for um, boosting our immunity uh, by getting the lymphatic flow going as well. And then it actually is blocking nerve signals for pain too. So it's really great at locking pain for people and then having them feel so relaxed after that they re reduce that stress, their anxiety, and then the pain goes down too. So yeah, it's really a great experience overall. Like I said, most of my clients just end up falling asleep during it. I always share with them afterward what I found in their feet too. And that's a little bit of the foot reading that happens as well as like when I'm working on the feet and I'm feeling around with my fingers, I'm feeling for different imbalances. So people always love that part. They always want to know, what did you find in my feet? And I have to tell them like, okay, don't worry. It's not like it's a crystal ball. And because I find something in your lung, it means that you've got something wrong with your lung. But it does mean that there can be an imbalance there. There can be a blockage of some sort. So I've been working to relieve that for them. Like your experience, she did see that your bladder was probably a little bit puffy, so she knew you had to go to the bathroom. But yeah, I always remind people that it's not a scary thing. I'm not going to tell you you have some crazy disease or anything like that. I can't diagnose you like that, but we can definitely tell by different colors in the skin and the feet and different ways that I feel the reflexes if there is that imbalance going on and if we need to create a better channel. Same as working with the meridians of the body. We need to open up that channel so everything can start flowing and working better and we can reduce the stress hormone in the body. That's why I love microsystems and reflexology yeah. is one of the microsystems, right? Like you were saying at the beginning, I love the ear reflexology. We have belly reflexology. We have different methods like Dr. Ten or Master Tong that's very specific to acupuncture. And then we have the foot reflexology. When you see a map and you have a great map, your map of the foot reflex reflexes i guess shows really well where everything is located how to access it and how to access each of them i, I love to kind of see that because it's so useful in accessing the body parasympathetic state yeah also allowing the body to detoxify because feet have a great ability to detoxify. So I love that, the lymphatic drainage. So let's say you see someone for the first time and you know you kind of went around your routine and asked them what they would like to work on. Do you focus 
on one thing during a session or do you do the whole thing each time just to kind of balance everything? How do you go about it? When I do see a client, I like to go through the whole foot first, usually just to help balance everything out. I do feel it's important to work all the body systems together. But as I mentioned before, I can go through that pretty quickly if I need to, and then go back in and spend some extra time on a certain body system. So if it's hormonal, yeah, I can go back in and work all the endocrine systems. So all the different glands in the body. And there's different techniques and holds that I can do that kind of balance them together. So yeah, I always like to do the whole foot and then I can go in and work on different issues that someone might be having with the reflex. I think are going to help with those. And I can focus on that a little bit more. So that's usually how I do it when I see a client because everybody at the same time is really wanting and liking that relaxation. So I feel like if I missed out on doing the whole foot, they might be a little bit like, Hey, but you just were working on my heel the entire time. So yeah, I always like to go and do the whole thing and then go in and target certain areas, depending on what we're working on. You always say that you're trying to help people with their health one reflex at a time because we're Mm -hmm. doing the same thing one acupuncture point at a time so it's kind of like really similar the way you approach as a whole system the person's foot or feet instead of just like targeted area so I, I really appreciate you sharing this so when you are going to do a session with your client and you're doing both feet, obviously the reflexes are the same reflecting on each foot, but is there differences from the right to the left? Basically the right foot usually mirrors the right side of the body and the left foot mirrors the left side of the body. We always work reflexes, for example, on both sides. Say you have neck pain more on this one side. I do work it on both because every once in a while it can cross over. But in general, it's the same foot to the same side of the body. And there are differences. So for example, on the liver being a little bit towards the right side of the body, we have a bigger liver reflex on that right side and smaller on the left. And same with the stomach. The stomach crosses over both to both feet as well. The spleen, for example, is just only on the left foot, whereas those other ones cross over both. So there is a little bit of differences depending on the actual anatomy of the body. That makes sense. So is the heart in both or is it just more on the left? So there are some different foot maps based on different cultures. There are slight variations in the foot maps. And I have seen the heart reflex just be on the left foot. But personally, with the one I use, I have it split between the right and the left. The cool part about the differences in the foot maps is that they're all valid because all of our bodies are a little bit different, right? You can say that the heart, yes, it's on the left side, but as far as where exactly it's sitting, that's going to be a little bit different depending on the person. I believe all the foot maps have their own validity, right? And sometimes too, I say, if you're feeling for the heart reflex on one side and you're working intuitively and it really doesn't feel like that is there, but if you move it over a little bit more... And it feels better in that location. Always trust your instinct. I like that because in TCM, it's the same. We have a lot of rendition of face map. One will have the liver on the side of the nose. Other one will have it on the side of the cheeks. Different school of thoughts. And you're right. For me, it's always gravitating towards the one that resonates the most with me. And especially when you try on your patient and you see what works well for you. So I totally totally understand that. There's not just one map. And I think the ear is the same in TCM. You know, we have lots of points on the ears and some ear map will mention points that others won't, right? I wanted to ask you, if you go and someone has really cracked heel, you know, it's very common for older people specifically to have really cracked heel. And so the heel obviously has reflexes in different area of the body, and you can share what that is with us. But mm-hmm. is that affecting the reflex at all? Do you take that in consideration or it's not part of reflexology as a whole? No, I do actually. So that's a little bit of like foot reading that we bring into it. And so things like callus 
or corns basically gives us an indication that, for example, with a callus, with a lot of cracked and callus around the heel, that there might be a little bit of protection over that reflex. And so first of all, when we're working on it with our hands, it's going to be a little bit harder to get through that callus to actually mm -hmm. trigger the reflex underneath. So I always encourage people to try to remove a little bit of that, but it also is giving us that indication that there is more tension and imbalance in that reflex. So for example, if they have the callus around the heel, that um, represents the reflexes for um, the pelvis and the glutes around. So it can be anywhere from the hip around the glutes all the way to the inner pelvis as well. And so to me, when I see that, I always ask people if they have a lot of tightness in that area or pain, and especially the more callus they have, the more that they usually feel that in that area. So what we do use a little bit of like foot reading in that way. Also, as I mentioned before, sometimes different colors in the feet, more redness over a reflex can indicate that there might be inflammation in that reflex or more blue can be that there's stagnation of energy. There's not as much circulation there. And so I might work that reflex more. Usually where people have those callus is where they have a lot of tension. And then sometimes there will be some callus that seems a little bit out of place. But again, for me, that's an indication that there's some imbalance in that area and we need to work on that area more. This is so cool because it's so similar to TCM. Redness is excess heat in TCM, right. which means inflammation. And right. a yellowish is excess dampness, which means there's a lot of either fungus or candida, or there yep. is a lot of excess body fluid that shouldn't be there. It should be more moving. Bluish right. purple is always a stagnation. So mm -hmm. I love that. It's the same. So yeah. <laughs> can you tell me a little bit of the, just a couple of, you know, explanation on where the history of reflexology comes from because it's so similar to TCM. The first known where they can pinpoint seeing where reflexology started, although I'm sure it could be much older, was with the ancient Egyptians. So they actually have hieroglyphics where they show people working on people's um, hands and feet. And so that was about 5,000 years ago. Um, but they also have some ancient foot maps from China, Vietnam, basically over in the Eastern countries as well. So they know that people were practicing this. I'm sure they were practicing TCM too. It's probably around the same age. But I love the hieroglyphics because I've always loved Egypt. I've always had an affinity for Egypt. And there is a quote that I don't have it exactly, but it's something around, if I let you touch my feet, just don't harm me. So it's like work in a way that you're going to heal me and bring that whole body wellness then around the 1900s, there was a Dr. Fitzgerald that kind of took reflexology and made it more modern day and started practicing it. Um, and then Eunice Ingham, who was a physiotherapist, helped him make the current map that we use today and map the reflexes on the feet because they noticed as they were working on patients in hospital, um, helping them recovery from surgeries, if they pushed on different points on their feet, it actually helped them recover faster. And that's how they went about creating the first foot map that we use today as more of a modern map. So it's only been around in a modern context for about 124 years-ish around there. But of course, as we know, it's more of an ancient knowledge that I feel like was just being rediscovered. And that's where I like to learn to go deeper. I like to learn about a meridian reflexology and base it on that TCM because I do really feel strongly that that kind of knowledge is at the basis of reflexology for sure. It's like any medicine, it gets molded by different people and we arrive at something that we have today. Same with TCM, there's a lot of school of thoughts and lots of different you know, texts and classics that allow us to learn and then adapt it as time change. That was really interesting because walk like an Egyptian, you know, that's all, walk <laughs> like an Egyptian. Right? It's just like when you talked about Egypt, all I could see is people walking like an Egyptian. They were walking bare feet. So they had totally. to have, you know, foot massage. Because I know every time you give me a foot or a face massage, either yeah. one or the other, I will fall asleep. So I know yeah. it totally puts me in that parasympathetic state. Obviously, acupuncture does this too, but as massage itself, you can massage my upper back and I love it and it's great and you can dig in there and it's fun. 
But when you massage my feet or my face, I'm snoring within 10 minutes. Like <laughs> Totally. And what's cool about reflexology, and because I often get asked like this distinction between massage and reflexology because they mm-hmm. are different. But like massage, we are working on the soft tissue of the body, whereas reflexology, like acupuncture, is more triggering those nerve reflexes those points in the feet that send a signal up the spinal cord to the brain and then out to the referral area. And we're working on meridians as well. So if we're opening up a channel here, what's going to affect that organ there. But yeah, those Egyptians, if they were building the pyramids and stuff all bare feet, I'm sure they needed a relaxation after that and just some release, right? (laughs) I feel like I had a past life there. So I'm like, this is not weird to me that I found this because it was after I found this that I was like, okay, I have this affinity for Egypt. And I went back and checked and it was the priests and the priestesses who normally worked with the royalty. They were the ones connected to the gods and they were the ones that practiced and taught the reflexology. So it's super cool that it's just It feels like it's more than just touching your feet. They really revered it as something where we're connecting you to your body, to the gods. And so I was like, I must have been a priestess back then, obviously. Obviously. (laughs) It's all coming full circle and I'm doing it. I'm doing it again, right? Because honestly, I'd never in my entire life before, like I said, that situation happened with my husband and going through that whole experience. So I do really feel like it was destined and it was meant to be. The deeper I go with reflexology, the more of an understanding I just have of the body within the universe and how there's that deeper connection. And I'm sure you feel the same thing when you're doing acupuncture yeah. and TCM. This is why we connected so easily and we could kind of yeah. you know, become friends and because we have a lot of similar way of thinking, which I yeah. think is so cool. Even though what we do is different, it's the same. Is there a misconception that people may have about reflexology? Have you ever had questions? Like I know for acupuncture, the misconception is, oh, it's going to hurt really bad, right? Yeah. Or, and I'm like, no, it's not. Is there a misconception that you see with reflexology? Yeah, I get that a lot too. Most people, when I first see them, I've asked them if they've had reflexology before because most people have, and it's been a very painful experience, very excruciating. Some forms of reflexology, you can even use a tool like a stick. Vietnamese is more deep tissue, and actually Chinese reflexology is more deep tissue as well. But that's the biggest thing. People are feeling like it's going to really hurt. And as I mentioned, my personal style is all about. Uh, less is more. And it's more about the specificity and being really intentional about the reflexes, rather than pushing really hard to create a response, right? I always mention to people, it's a nerve reflex. So you can feel the lightest touch on your hand, someone doesn't have to push really hard. In that way, I've actually found too that Working in a lighter, gentler way can actually be more effective, especially if you're dealing with clients or patients that have a lot of pain or autoimmune conditions, a lot of inflammation in the body, because the last thing we want to do is push hard and then have their body tense up and have them be on guard. So the more relaxed it can be, the more their body can really sink in and trust the practitioner, trust me to take them into that parasympathetic state so that then the body, it knows how to naturally heal, right? We're just trying to remove some of the blockages. So, and uh, people's feet are sensitive. They're very sensitive. They're not used to walking over rocks and wood and all this stuff. Yeah, I feel like a lighter approach is definitely effective. And as I've gone on and worked longer with a client, so I go deeper as well. If it feels like there's stuff that needs to be released, I will go deeper. But in general, that's probably the biggest misconception. I'm the same school of thoughts. The less needle, the less amount of needles yeah. that I can put in a patient in order to trigger a response, I'm going to do. And yeah. I'm also going to make sure that this person is relaxing because you're right. If they're on the totally. fight or flight the whole time because they're in so much pain, how are they totally. going to get in the healing state? They can't <laughs> yeah. heal. No, exactly. <laughs> One of the things that I talked about when we first started is that it's my birthday week. La, la, la. (laughs) I won't ask you how old you are, though. People don't like that. Oh, I I don't care. What am I? (laughs) I was born in 68. What does that make me? 56. Woo! Amazing. (laughs) I have no problem with my age. So, you know, as long as I'm happy and I'm having fun and I stay healthy. So it depends on how you're in your head and your body. Because it's my birthday week. 
You are so sweet because one of the things that you do is you do teach practitioners a course that is such a great course for practitioners like me to add as a little extra tool for their patients. And I took your course, that was like a year and a half ago, and I loved it because it's simple, straight to the yeah. point or straight to the reflex. <laughs> yes, <Pun intended>. yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's straight to the reflex and it's so easy to follow. You give us a routine, you give us everything we need in order to be able to start practicing reflexology on our patients. And my patients love it. I don't do it on everybody, obviously, but I've done it or I've asked patients, especially if they are in a state of really stressed. So there, there's a lot yeah. going on and we've put the needle and I can see it's going to take them a while to relax. I'm like, okay, let's add this up. Or sometimes totally. I do it at the end. Or sometimes if it's a new patient, I might do maybe five minutes, just five minutes to relax them before I needle them because they maybe they're anxious about the needle. So yeah. I love that you created this course for us practitioners to have that extra tool in our box. Can you please share what's in the course for everyone to understand what I did? And I know Many people have done it because last year you were so kind to offer it to the AcuPro Academy community. And so many people took the course and came back and said it was awesome because you're a great teacher. And you know what? I was actually shocked when you originally told me that you didn't learn about foot reflexology in your training because as I mentioned before, they're so closely related. And I do feel like reflexology comes from TCM. So I was actually shocked to hear that you didn't learn about that. And like you said, it's an amazing way to bring an extra tool in for your clients, your patients, so that you can amp up the, fe the effects of what you're doing already with the acupuncture. It is amazing for people, as you mentioned, that can be really nervous around needles. It's a great way to start that way. And because you're touching their body, but it is a really nice way for practitioners to connect with their clients on a little bit deeper level by touching their feet, right? The feet are really sensitive and it's really, it's much more intimate than just massaging their back. It's nice to connect with your clients in that way. And then as I mentioned, amp up the effects of what you're already doing by mirroring the same thing on the feet through the reflexology. The course that I created, I show you how to start with basic reflexology techniques so that you can be doing that properly on the feet. But also I set you up with a 20 minute routine so that you can help release the stress and anxiety in your clients boost their mood and as well as decrease any pain that they might be feeling. So this increases the relaxation, helps them get into that parasympathetic state so that then whatever you're doing with your needles, with your acupuncture can work even better. I lay it out really simply so that you can follow along. And when you're finished the course, you can start using it right away. And it's been really helpful, as you mentioned, for lots of uh, acupuncturists and TCM doctors. And I've had a lot of other RMTs, massage therapists, and a lot of other practitioners use it as well. So it's really a great tool just to be able to add to your toolkit. So the course is about an hour, but you would have to go and look at it a couple of times and really take the time to do your homework and to practice, because I think that's the best part of it. That's what I did. Also, you do get a certificate after you write a quiz and you pass a quiz, just like all the courses that are supposed to be out there, because that's how we get continuing education hours anyway. But what I really liked is that it was very geared for us practitioners to just add on. So what I love that you did last year is that because it was my birthday week last year, you gave everybody a discount on the course. And so this year I was like, well, maybe my TCM <laughs> Rockstar communities could benefit from another time of this. So I ask you, would you give another discount on the same course as last year and you were so generous giving us a discount again for the same course as last year for all the people that didn't have the chance to take that course for my birthday as a birthday present to my community so I love that but you also have for the people that took the course prior last year in upgrade because a lot of people ask and said okay I really like this course but can I get the next level and I was like Suzanne yeah. you need to give them the next level so tell me a little bit about that. 
I had such great feedback from your practitioners and your students on the beginner course that I created an advanced course. So this one's actually longer than the first one. I've added in some more routine to add on to that 20 minute routine that was in the beginner course. So you can have a longer routine to share with your clients. So this is going to cover more reflexes and more relaxation techniques. And then I'm also going to dive into some personal techniques that I've honed in on over the seven years of that I've been doing this. So we're going to go into some more advanced techniques that I have created and honed in on. And then we're also going to jump into some different routines and protocols for some of the top things that your students and practitioners asked for. So things like for stress, sleep and insomnia, balancing hormones in the body for women's health and also fertility, and then colds and immunity. So there will be routines for more of those specific issues. And then I'm also going to share more about foot conditions and the foot reading that we chatted about today. And then there will be a certificate of completion as well. So we're just going to dive a lot deeper into how you can use even more intentionally to help your clients based on what you're working on. I know there was a demand for it. And a lot of people that took your course, like I said, really ask, okay, what's the next level, right? So mm -hmm. for the people that are listening to this podcast, we'll have all the links in the show notes below. So in case you were looking for where you found the course, where you found everything, obviously. But also if you're listening to this podcast on the release, date, which is my birthday, <laughs> Suzanne is being very generous and is giving a discount for that level beginner course that we did last year. She's doing the discount again this year, which is so sweet, but that is going away March 26th. So I really, really hope that you listen to this before March 26th. If not, it's all good. You could still enjoy the course right after it but the discount will go away on March 26. So now if people want to know more about you or they want to look at all your nice videos and get to know you a bit better, can you share your website and Instagram with us? So if people want to learn more about me, my website is uh, footgurureflexology.com. And I do have a link on there to my free tutorials that takes you over to my YouTube channel where I have lots of 30 second tutorials just on specific reflexes. People have really loved those because it's really easy to just dive in and try them on your own feet. And all of my socials are the same thing. So they're at footgurureflexology. I love that you are very generous with your teaching online as well. Just like I am, you like to share a lot and make sure that yeah. everybody can see the amazing benefits of reflexology. Thank you so, so much for coming on today. <laughs> I hope that everybody really benefited. And seriously, this is a great course. So if you haven't taken it, I would seriously consider because it's a great tool to add to your toolbox. Madame Suzanne, this is my mom's name, by the way, Suzanne. Oh, yeah? Oh, awesome. I know. <laughs> Madame Suzanne, thank you again for coming. I really appreciate your time. No, thank you so much, Clara. You know I love you. You're definitely a mentor to me with the way that you share online as well. And I'm so happy to help any of your CCM rock stars on your end. I would love for them to dive in and they can reach out to me if they have any questions about the course. I'm happy to help out and, yeah, looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I truly hope you benefited from this episode and I would love for you to share it with a friend that may benefit from it as well. Follow the show, leave a review, and if you want more, go to my website, acuporacademy.com. I have tons of resources there with treatment protocols, case study, free courses, and so much more. And connect with me on all social media at Acupro Academy. I'm on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, X, Pinterest, and LinkedIn and TikTok. <laughs> and no matter what, keep rocking it using TCM. Please listen to the disclaimer because the AccuPro Show podcast and material shared through AccuPro Academy, which is a subdivision of Natural Health Sense Incorporated, are designed solely for educational and entertainment purposes. The utilization of information from this podcast or any associated material is at the user's discretion 
and risk. This content is not meant to replace the guidance of an acupuncturist, Chinese medicine doctor, medical doctor, physician, or any qualified professional, nor is it a substitute for proper diagnosis or treatment. Users are strongly advised not to ignore or postpone seeking medical advice for any existing medical condition with their healthcare professional regarding any health concerns.